All right, so this is the tiger cupcake. It has a little tiger tail on top. It says it's a cinnamon cupcake. Frosting is regular vanilla and it's actually really good. And then cinnamon cupcake with apple pie filling. So you can see that right there. <laughs> Sorry, we had a, a knife dilemma. All right, apple pie filling is good. It reminds me of like a McDonald's apple pie. Not a bad thing. I like this cupcake a lot. I'm gonna finish it. Like so I'm gonna give this a 3.8 and then I'll share it with you, don't worry. Then we got cornbread over here, which I've never gotten. Good flavor, but it's a little dry. Hot barbecue. <laughs> yeah, dry is right. Oh, I'm okay. At least they only got on her nose. And then this is the half chicken dark. It's really, really fatty, but the skin looks good. Ladies, ladies. Thank you. And then um, chicken leg. The chicken and that hot barbecue sauce is so good. Definitely get that. Cornbread, not very good. I almost choked and died on it, so 0.3. On the chicken, though, I definitely would get that again. It's really nice and spicy with that hot barbecue. I'm gonna give that 4.1. Knock the off button. You just start with From that striped leg, because they probably will remind you of a zebra, but they are actually the closest living relative of a giraffe. They have the same shaped head as a giraffe and the same long prehensile tongue that they can use to lick their eyeballs, clean their ears out, or just grab the food they want off of the trees and bushes. Lick their eyeballs? Or the only mammals, if not the only mammal, that can lick their own ears. And they're so elusive that whenever they have a baby, they just hide that baby somewhere and return to it periodically to nurse. And in order to help stay hidden, baby o coffee don't go to the bathroom at all. They don't pee, they don't poop. For the first four to eight weeks of life. That is my weirdest so copy fact. Yeah. 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 It's kind of cool, kind of impressive. Um, now, we don't know exactly how many okapi there are, but we do know that many of the other animals that rely on Central Africa's rainforest are dwindling in number. And one of the biggest issues is the deepest parts of that rainforest, the, the Democratic Republic of the Congo, is right where we're mining for a mineral called coltium. Mm. Um, you might not have heard of it before I finish that, though. We have a saddle-billed stork over there on the left. They're one of the largest stork in Africa. They have about a nine-foot wingspan, which is similar yep. to the length of the canopy above your head, actually. Um, but yeah, so you might not have heard of Coltian before, but I bet we all own some and probably have it with us here today. It's used in any electronic you plug into charge. Your cell phones, cameras, computers, tablets, anything like that. Just recycle those items when they don't work anymore because that coal tan will still work and they can reuse it somewhere else. Notice our sign here on the left, Poly Poly. That's going to be our speed limit as we head through the Safi River. It means slowly in Swahili. But here in the Safi River, we do want to keep an eye out for shadows under the water. Oh, looks like we're going to have some in our back right corner there. A couple of hippo back there. Um, hopefully we're going to see even more up ahead. Um, but the tricky part about finding hippo is they can't sweat. So they are usually in the water during the daytime. That's why they're nocturnal. They can't swim though, so they're usually touching the bottom of the river. They walk along the bottom and resurface right, every five to eight minutes here. for a breath. And Looks like pelicans. there are going to be some more over here on our left, in addition to these oh, pink yeah. bagged oh. pelicans. They're must eat their breakfast. So hippo are herbivores, they don't eat meat, but don't let that fool you either because they have powerful jaws and long teeth that are just for defense. You don't want to be on a hippo's bad side. Also the pink backed pelican here are one of the smaller pelican species, but they do still have a seven to nine foot wingspan, which is pretty awesome. They're eating. Take a look at these hippos. Some of them might even show off those big teeth that they have. So they're very, very territorial animals. 
I have things to see my eyes. Do you see him? Yeah, he's in the water. We're so cute. And over here, guys, make sure we're being a little bit extra quiet because we're gonna have another hippo here. And right in front of her is her newborn. Oh, like where? Teeny, 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 tiny thing right over underneath her ear. I don't see it. It's super, super tiny. So the, it's that mom over by the wall. Baby the wall. Oh. born at around 80 pounds, but it, that's how big mom is. So that's how small that baby looks next to her. Keep a tight grip on your belongings here because we are in crocodile territory. And crocodiles have the most powerful jaws in the world. Make sure you all stay completely seated here, guys. Look at him moving. Maybe about as long as a giraffe is tall. We're talking 14 feet on average for the Nile crocodile. But they've been known to grow all the way up to 20 feet. Now they can be really good parents too. They roll their baby's eggs around in their mouths to help them hatch, carry the little ones from place to place in those powerful jaws. They're very protective moms. And same with that hippo. So that hippo was born um, about a bit over a week ago now. Um, but moms are going to be super, super protective. They actually give birth underwater. It's lucky that we got to see the baby even that much because she actually, he or she, I don't think we even know yet. I tend to alternate. So whatever I say is not necessarily the truth. Um, we, uh, cause it's, she's really protective over that baby. She, baby's going to nurse underwater. And uh, they haven't actually moved to rejoin the rest of the group yet because they are such territorial and defensive animals. Uh, mom's going to want to keep that baby close to her before she starts hanging out with those other hippos. Make sure she teaches it a little bit about what it means to be a hippo first. Um, but we're very, very excited about that addition. It's um, the newest. We haven't had a baby hippo in a long time. So we're super excited. Uh, I will say I do this all day, every day, and I do not see it easily very often. So you can always ride safaris over and over, try to get a good picture. Um, but the fact that we could see that it was kind of there is decent, like considering how small it is in the corner that they've been picked to hang out in. Now, here we are, we're going to start to see some giraffe. We're going to get a little closer to them here up ahead, but giraffe are the tallest land animals, so it's the easiest to spot from a distance. They are going to be 15 to 18 feet tall as adults, and about 6 feet tall just as newborns. So even the shortest giraffe in the whole world is taller than I'll ever be. We spend almost all day eating. They barely sleep. They only sleep about 30 minutes each day, and those 30 minutes don't have to be consecutive either. Sleep standing up, sitting down. They could lay all the way down. They usually wouldn't. It makes them a little too vulnerable to predators. Oh, and speaking of predators, over on our left, way back by the bamboo, just sleeping. We do have some African painted dogs. Also known as African wild dogs. Painted dogs are the most successful predators in Africa. They have a hunting success rate more than three times that of the lions. And they are so successful because they're yeah, among like their I'm, I'm with you. They're super family oriented, led by both an alpha male and alpha female, who together decide the movements of the group. They are a totally different animal than a hyena, but because they are so endangered, so threatened, and there also not no in many hyena. of our more popular movies, uh, a lot of people haven't seen or heard of them before. But learn more about painted dogs, they're pretty fascinating. We're going to have drop on both sides of the road here in a minute, and then you'll also see those brown antelope back there with those long curved horns. Those ones are the sable antelope, and they're not afraid to use those horns. Sable antelope are known for being tough and unyielding, and they'll fight off a lion if they have to, and the decision to fight or flight, they always choose to fight. They don't back down, and that's why we made them the emblem of our reserve here, because that's exactly how we want to approach our defense of all of these awesome animal species. And giraffe, believe it or not, have the same number of bones in their necks as you do. Seven vertebrae for them, and seven vertebrae for us. Their bones are a lot larger than ours are, but you could still say we are neck and neck. Thank you. Really stuck my neck out for that one. Uh, I'm a lot of, like one bad joke per safari. More than that, they could send me to Jungle Cruise, and don't worry, I won't risk that. Look at how close she is. Make sure we do keep our hands and everything inside the truck. 
but admire her. She's beautiful. And it's really lucky to get to see this many giraffe because giraffe are unfortunately endangered. They've actually already gone extinct from seven countries in Africa. So uh, when you hear about these threats, it's real, it's happening. And we have to fight to protect them while we still can. Now here at Disney, we're doing a whole lot to help them, both these ones that you're looking at right here and ones throughout the entire continent. If you go to Disney.com slash conservation, you can learn some about the projects that we're involved in, and um, you can follow them on whatever social media you use. It's free, it's easy, it means you get to see lots of cool animal pictures, and you get to stay in the loop of how these animals are doing, and that honestly helps a whole lot more than anyone gives the credit for it. These ones are the Maasai giraffe, so they're found in eastern Africa. They have more jagged edges to their spots, and their spots are going to go all the way down to their toes. And up on this hill here, we are going to see a dazzle of zebra and some springbok up there. So springbok are the national animal of South Africa. I know we're kind of looking at the sun uh, to see them there, but they actually have an adaptation for that. They have black stripes under their eyes to reflect the glare of the sun, which is super useful. They are the third fastest animal on earth, running close to 60 miles an hour. Now a group of zebra is called a dazzle. It's my favorite animal group name, but there are a lot of really great animal group names out there. So if you are bored in any long lines this trip, that's an excellent thing to Google. They are kind of hanging out just where they're not easy to see at this time of day. But yeah, Springbok can also jump about six feet straight in the air or 13 feet across. And they land from one jump just to bounce right back up. They're super, super talented in that. They're doing that to show off to their predators. And they would say, look at how tough I am, look at how fast I am. I'd be way too exhausting to try to catch. Now over here, guys, on our right, we're gonna have my favorite animal, the African elephant. Not just that, but this is one of my favorite elephants. He is 12 or 13 now. I don't remember exactly when his birthday is, but he is, I think, one of our smartest elephants and he uses it all for mischief. He's extremely clever, always getting into something he shouldn't, um, but he's pretty wonderful. Um, and elephant are our largest land animals. They're gonna eat on average about 300 pounds of food each and every day to get and stay so big. And they have to eat so much because they have actually have very inefficient digestive systems. Half of what they eat comes right back out, looking more or less the same as it is like when it went in. There's so much grass in elephant poop that it's used to make paper. And you can check it out right at poopoopaper.com if you want some. I have some, it's pretty great. Saves trees too. But not many places can supply 300 pounds of plants per elephant per day. That's a lot of food and that's why they're always on the move looking for more. And a little bit too often lately, elephant have been finding food that doesn't belong to them, like farmland. Elephant love fruits and vegetables and knocking things over for fun. So if they find a farm, they think they found a free buffet and a playground. They're having a grand old time. But those farmers could lose their entire livelihoods because those elephant came through. So it is leading to a lot of conflict between the people and the elephants. Which is why we teamed up with the Save the Elephant Foundation. And we've been working on studying elephant communication, actually, how they're talking to each other from really far away. We learned that elephants do make all sorts of noises that our ears can't hear, so we developed some technology to help hear some of those other vocalizations. And that way we discovered that elephants have a certain rumble that they make just when there's bees in the area. It turns out elephants are afraid of bees. They have sensitive skin around their ears and their trunks, and you know, an elephant never forgets so one bee sting up the trunk and that's it. They're not gonna put up with that again. So the farmers were able to surround their crops with beehive fences. That way if the elephant came too close, they'd hear the bees buzzing, it would invade warn everybody else that that area was dangerous and then they'd head somewhere else for lunch instead. It worked excellently. It's helping to save the elephant's lives, the farmer's livelihoods, it's supporting the bees as well. The bees can pollinate the farmer's crops. A real win-win-win. Over on our right, you can see those zebra and springbok. A little bit easier than we could before. And there's also a zebra over on the Gorilla Falls Trail that you can check out too. These ones are the Hartman Mountain Zebra. On the trail, you'll see the Grevy Zebra. So do two different kinds. There's three kinds all together. 
They're all going to range in how threatened or endangered they are. Over on our left, we have a whole flamboyance of Greater Flamingo, including several chicks over there. So yeah, baby flamingos are born gray and fluffy, and they have those straight black beaks, so they can't catch those greens like the grown-ups can yet. That grown-up beak is very, very well designed to help them filter feed out of the water. So since the babies can't do that yet, mom and dad are gonna feed them for the first few months. And before you know it, they're gonna be the, those chicks are gonna be the same size as mom and dad. They grow up quick, but it does take them a little longer to become pink. How pink they get is gonna depend both on how much they eat and um, what type of flamingo they are. So the greater flamingo are the tallest, but also the palest kind. And then it does take a bit over a year for that pink color to come in in general. Yeah, they were gray, good call. Now over here on our left, we're gonna have a white rhino. Now this one's our male. Oh, it looks like we'll see the females up ahead. But white rhino are the most social species of rhino. They live in a group called a crash, and it's called a crash because they have horrible eyesight. They rely mainly on their sense of hearing. And I did see more up ahead, so I am gonna let this one cross, and I'm not gonna cut off the rhino. We're gonna see where he wants to go first. Oh, no, nope, he changed his mind. We'll be going right next to him. No, all rhino species are endangered. This one is a southern white rhino. And I make that distinction. I'm gonna make sure we get out of his way so that I'll see the other ones up here. He doesn't look like he knows where he wants to go. Um, but these are the southern white rhino. Wow, that was awesome. There's only two northern white rhino remaining in the entire world today. Uh, that's they're functionally extinct those two are older females so it's really important that we fight to help the rest of these rhinos while we can so on our left guys we're gonna have two white rhino right here and then up on that hill behind them we have some cheetah, cheetah back to them um, but cheetah are the fastest land animals they're gonna reach between 60 and 70 miles an hour they do reach those speeds quite quickly in just about three seconds they actually have a similar acceleration rate to the rock and roller coaster but they're technically not big cats because they can't roar. They also can't compete. They're built for speed, not for power. So they can Which, which one is this? The daughter. Have you got Disney Plus? Yes. Okay, this is Anala. She was on Disney Plus. Oh, okay. She's the one that was playing with the pumpkin. Oh, the pumpkin, okay. Yeah. Come here, over here, girls. You want to see? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Anala. Yep, A and A. Oh, look, she's looking. She's looking at her. Yeah, you see her turned her head? <laughs> she is looking at yeah. She's so pretty, isn't she? Yep. All right, let's go to the next section and see if we can see more. All right, so here's the start of the show. All right, here they come. In a moment, the sky will come alive with color as a variety of vibrant macaws join together. Creative. They're going to come from this way, baby, so look at the, uh, the tree of life. We encourage you to gather around our avian I hear them. At the base of the tree you hear them? Look up, look up, look up. Of these macaws back in the aviary. 
And the reason why they come and land with us, they can fly anywhere in Animal Kingdom, but they land with us because we use positive reinforcement. So that basically means whenever they do something we really like, they get something they really like. And that increases the likelihood that they'll do it again. So in this case, it comes in a nutshell. Their very favorite snack is peanuts and banana chips. Now, you might tell these, uh, these guys are pretty loud, that's right, James. <laughs> which helps them a lot in the wild so they can communicate with their flock mates through the communities of the rainforest. But this does not make them a very good pet in your home. And bears can be one of the most challenging animals you have in a household. For several reasons, they're very loud, they're messy, they'll poop all over your house. And not only that, they can be very destructive. They use that big beak on their face in the wild to carve cavities into a tree, but in your home, that would be your drywall, that could be your new TV or your antique furniture. So we're so glad you come here to Animal Kingdom to see them, and you can go home parrot free. <laughs> James really enjoyed that banana chip there. Now, if you guys are just walking by, this is Made Encounters, and my favorite part is just about to happen. So if you have any phones or cameras, you point them up towards the sky, and a very special moment is going to be happening super soon. And if you capture any great photos, be sure to share them on social media and use the hashtag Winged Encounters. We would love to share those memories with you. Um, so we work with lots of macaws, but there's a very special type that we work with called the blue throated macaw. And they're actually struggling out in the wild. There are only 200, less than 200 out in the wild, making them the most rare species of wild macaw. This is due to things like habitat loss and the illegal pet trade. But luckily, it's not all bad news. People have noticed that macaws are disappearing in the wild and have taken come. action to help save them. So we work with the World Parrot Trust to help release blue-throated macaws back into the wild so that we can see a sky filled with macaws one day. Is that something that you guys might want to see right here in Animal Kingdom? Yeah! yeah? Well, all you have to do is look to see that.